First of all, good morning, everyone. And I wanna thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Lisa Torgerson. I am the Director of Leisure Travel Services for TravelX International. And today we have been joined by some of our partners in the travel industry to talk about the truth about travel and COVID-19. We have Tim Renkowski from Crystal Cruises, David Collignan from Decouver, which is our partner in France. We have Andrea Grisdale from IZ Bellagio, who is our partner in Italy, and Kylie Swen, who is our main um, regional sales manager for TravelX Insurance. So I want to, first of all, if you have questions during the webinar, please type them in the chat box and we'll try to get to as many of those as possible at the end. And if we don't, what I will do is I will email the answers to you if we can't get to all of the questions by the end of the webinar. Um, the first thing I did want to say and apologize is Bob Meisler from Azamara Cruises was originally supposed to join us and he had a conflict. So Tim Renkowski early this morning did a taping for us because he's in a meeting right now um, from Crystal Cruises. So I'm gonna let Tim take it away. He'll be our first presenter and then I'll introduce each one as we go along. So Tim, take it away. Thank you, Lisa. Crystal Cruises has been in business for 30 years. And over those 30 years, we've seen a lot of changes. I've been fortunate. I've been in the cruise business slightly longer than that, 25 years with Crystal. Crystal has more from a ocean cruise line company to a river cruise line company now to a yacht and into the expedition market. And no matter where you were thinking about maybe going on a cruise, everything has kind of gone into a light turmoil. Uh, people are looking for directions and that's very important when you spend your dollars to go on, whether it's an ocean cruise or a river cruise or something that more adventuresome. So I wanted to bring you up to date on what Crystal has done uh, recently. Um, we've gone through, just like most cruise lines, uh, a lot of cancellations to schedules, changes of schedules. Uh, it's been an ongoing process since probably the middle of February. It hasn't been fun. But we think as we get through all these processes, um, we think it's important to look ahead and hopefully find a time that when you're ready to return, it'll be beneficial for you uh, to think about once again returning to a cruise. Please go to the next slide. As I said, Crystal has four parts now to it. We have our river cruises, our yacht, our up and coming new ship in ex expedition cruising, and our two ocean ships. All our ships, except for our new one, uh, have won awards for how we take care of the guests, how we take care of uh, onboard, our crew, our ship, and all the places we go to. We've always had uh, a look at the market where we go to and we wanna preserve it as much as possible. So, you know, we think down line about preservation and those type of things. But the main thing about Crystal is we have less passengers than the average cruise line. Our river ships only carry 106 guests. We have 68 crew members taking care of them. Our yacht, 62 guests with 84 crew members taking care of them. Our expedition ship coming up in August will carry 200 guests with 206 crew members. And our two ocean ships carry less than 1,000 guests each. 980 guests by 625 crew members, and our Crystal Symphony now carries 848 guests by, with 540 crew members. One of the highest space to crew passenger ratios you'll find in any world, let alone uh, cruising. And it's important when you're visiting all these different destinations, it's not a crowded atmosphere. It's not uh, a lot of people trying to get off the ship at the same time or getting on the ship at the same time or dining or enjoying the entertainment on board. It's always been important to you or into, to us that when you're talking about luxury, space is probably one of the biggest premiums out there. Next slide, please. 
go. So back in early March, it seems so far away, back in early March, uh, we uh, revised our cancellation policy for all our sailings in 2020. We wanted people to feel confident if they'd still decide to go on a cruise later this fall or, or later this summer or fall or into winter, uh, through our 2020 sailings, um, our policy up through 90 days, um, over 91 days, basically, you can cancel for any reason. Uh, 90 to 31 days, we'll do a mixture of a refund of 75% with a future cruise credit of 25%. 30 days to eight days prior to sailing, we'll do a full 100% uh, future cruise credit. Uh, so the advantages of thinking about still going somewhere uh, don't, shouldn't be hampered by worrying about getting some of your money back. Next. We've also taken a lot of our 2020 sailings and reduced the full deposit. Our normal deposit on sailings is 25%. Uh, we've reduced that to $100 per person for cruises, up to 13 sit nights sailing nights, $200 for, per person for cruises 14 to 21 nights. And if you go longer than 22 days, it's a $500 per person. For our river ships, for our yacht, and eventually our crystal expedition ship, our crystal endeavor, it's a $500 per person deposit for all the voyages in 2020. For 2021 sailings, for 2022 sailings, all our schedules are out. When we do a rollover credit, uh, those are available all the way through 2022 sailing days. Next slide, please. If you always want to check on what we're looking at when it comes to cruising, we've put our advisory alerts right on our website easy to get. There's a banner form. You can go on, you can check out the sailings, um, what we're doing, and what we're talking about in the future. Uh, you know, the world changes on a, almost a daily basis with what's going on. But as we proceed through the next 30 days, uh, we've had to cancel a couple more sailings through April. So basically, after May 1, our schedules are still intact. We'll have some of call changes, especially in Europe now. Uh, but we're very confident as you plan ahead and as you feel more confident in traveling, we're going to be there and, and we're going to be one of the best ships for you to feel comfortable on in the future. Cruising is one of those places that you can always return to wherever you're at in the world, back to the ship for the security of the ship uh, for the security of yourself, for getting the right information, whether it's traveling in the future or just finding your way around on the itinerary you're at. It's a peace of mind. It's a, it's a coming back to a home, which is very important to you. Uh, we want you to continue to travel. We want you to think about going in the future, whether it's on Crystal or whether it's on another cruise line, we want you to always consider safety to be one of the most important things along the line. It's very important when you travel to be cautious. All the areas you go to, to look ahead, to talk to your travel advisor, and to make sure you're going in the right direction with all the support along the ways. I've worked with TravelX International for a good many years, and it's always been important to them and Crystal to make sure their clients and our guests enjoy all the wonders of the world wherever you may be traveling to. Guests are always our number one, uh, I, guests are always number one in our world. The security of our guests our crew, our ship is always the main thing that we look forward to. Yes, there'll be changes of ports along the way. Uh, the, the, the world has changed a lot and it's very important to always remember that. 
we're not going to go into a port, even at the last minute, if we deem it to be unsafe. And that's always important. You can't do that maybe on some land trips, but on a cruise ship you can, and that's very important. So thank you very much. Always talk to your consular at TravelX International, and please always think about that next destination you want to go to. Crystal has our schedules out all the way now through the winter of 2023, so you can plan accordingly. Thank you very much. Safe travels. Thanks, Tim. So next we have a partner that we work with a lot in France. His name is David Collignon, but I'm going to have him pronounce his name because it sounds way better. Um, he is the Chief Marketing Officer for Découvert in France. So David? Lisa, the way you pronounced it was just perfect. So it's Collignon. Um, very happy to, to take it to, to have the opportunity to um, present uh, France and what the current situation is and to exchange with everyone here today. Um, so I'm uh, the Chief Marketing uh, Officer at Découvert. Uh, we are a non-site partner, pardon me, um, of TravelX in France. Um, and we specialize in individual travel as well as groups travel. Um, and we have been around for the past 20 years. This year, it's, uh, it's our anniversary. Um, and you know, in, in, in 20 years, um, um, I think as, as Daniel shared, uh, uh, a company goes through many, many different crises and, and definitely learns in each and every one of them how to handle, uh, not only survive, but also um, allow uh, their clients to continue and enjoy uh, their, uh, or our services. That's the, that's the main point. Um, so currently in France, we're seeing like in many, many other parts of the world, um, a complete lockdown. Um, I think Andrea, my uh, uh, Italian colleague, can also share a little bit about this peculiar situation, but it seems that some parts of the US are also facing this situation, uh, which is a road that was followed by uh, China indeed. Um, and what's, what's very interesting as a matter of, of hope is that we are seeing that China, after a month of lockdown, has started to plateau um, in terms of the daily new cases. Um, so effectively, the epidemic is now under control in the situation of lockdown in China. Um, and we will see how things evolve, but uh, it really leaves us hope as to how this situation might evolve. And um, my father um, was, was sharing me um, uh, in the recent days uh, that in the end, the situation is so exceptional that in Europe, we might have not seen something like that since World War II, in a sense. And what people did at the end of the war in World War II, of course, was to celebrate, right? Um, and when this, uh, this lockdown is over, um, we will of course, all go out um, and celebrate with our loved ones, have a lovely dinner, have a great party. And the next thing that we'll be doing is go out even further away and plan our travels. Um, and to that end, uh, we've been blessed last week uh, in Découvert to have, to have had one booking. Uh, so we thank this uh, wonderfully courageous traveler from the US who plans their trip for this summer in France. And of course, the gentleman agreement between uh, them and us was that should the situation evolve, uh, they would have 60 days to cancel at no cost uh, their, their upcoming trip. And we're really happy to, you know, uh, encourage people to, to start early on traveling their, uh, planning their travel, sorry, uh, not traveling, uh, this is a weird word, so planning their travels early on, um, because not only does this allow you to think about something else uh, than the current situation, uh, but also it is uh, risk-free and you're doing it ahead of everyone. So don't wait for uh, the situation to be jammed and for everyone to be super busy and for, uh, for all prices to, to triple. Plan your travel now and if uh, the situation doesn't evolve well, uh, we will refund. So what we have done 
um, in the past weeks is to react to the situation. Uh, and we have implemented uh, terms and conditions that allowed people who currently had bookings with us to postpone easily at no cost or uh, get a refund uh, based on the, the normal cancellation policies if they didn't want to postpone. So we've been, we've been trying to seek out fairness in every situation and to be as flexible as, as possible. And uh, for people who will be willing to travel to France, uh, will be really uh, happy to show that same flexibility. Um, and um, uh, I wanted to share also um, in France how the economy is being supported. Um, the, the government is uh, doing strong efforts to, to support uh, all companies, but especially SMEs like ours. Um, and we're, we're blessed to have the support of the government to, to cover uh, wages, which you know, um, matters, uh, of course, to any, to any company. And we're also blessed to have uh, the necessary uh, cash flow uh, to wait during that tough time um, um, and uh, wait for the summer to arrive uh, and for uh, for normal life to to resume, so I think the the, the message that I wanted to to really uh, pass uh, today um, was one that is sort of statistic, um, being that uh, so far the trends that we're seeing with similar measure being implemented in China is that this epidemic gets under control after one month. Uh, having plateaued uh, effectively in China. Now there, we're not going to play scientists and we don't know what's going to happen when uh, people resume a normal life. And I don't uh, aim to uh, pretend that I, that, I, that I can guess the future, but this certainly leaves some hope. And the second thing is that nowadays we are uh, facing a very rapidly evolving situation Every day we have news of uh, hundreds of new cases. Uh, we hear about uh, our close acquaintances sometimes going to hospital and we're focused on that and to uh, trying to, uh, to save what can be in a sense. Um, but I will say in these times, there are two things that uh, you can do if you have the luxury to do so. Of course, if you have any savings, invest in the stock market. And if you have a little bit of time, plan your travels because uh, that's what will ease your mind. It will also ease your mind in a couple or more months time when uh, everybody will be doing so. Thank you, David. That was very well put. So next we have Andrea Grisdale. She is the CEO and founder of IC Bellagio, our partner in Italy. So Italy, uh, Andrea, go ahead and, and tell us what's happening there. Absolutely, Lisa. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be here today and buongiorno to everybody. Almost aperitivo time for David and I over here in Europe. Um, I'm actually talking to you today from Bellagio Le Como. So we are in Lombardy, which is um, one of the regions that I think you've heard quite a lot about uh, recently. We were one of the first regions to be in total lockdown along with our friends over in Veneto. And uh, now, of course, we have the whole country, thank goodness, in lockdown, which enables us to get to the end of this cycle, as David says, as quickly as possible. Um, we feel um, that we are in the middle of the cycle, as uh, we believe it's a 60-day cycle. And uh, this all really began around the, the weekend, actually, of my 50th birthday. I have to tell you that I left the office on Friday, the 21st of February, and our business in sales was up 40% for zero on the same period last week and uh, last year. And um, the following, uh, during that weekend, um, things started to move very, very quickly. And by the time we got to the office on Monday, we had a very, very different situation uh, to what we had left it on the Friday. 
Um, we are fortunate in that we have seen since the 20th of March, uh, we have seen the number of daily deaths, the number of new cases as actually starting to fall quite heavily, which is obviously fantastic news. And our forecast is that we will be at the end of this 60 day cycle by the 20th, 21st of April. Um, what are we doing at IC Bellagio? So when this all began, we obviously had to think smart, we had to think fast, and we had to think how do we preserve the company, the business, um, the livelihoods, not only of our team, but also of our partners across Italy. Uh, the first thing was to look at the, to the government. And I have to say, um, for those of you who follow me on social media, you will note that I keep using the words, Italy continues to impress. And I have to say that I believe Italy has been extremely impressive during this whole process. Um, the government support for businesses like mine and David's through this kind of situation has been second to none. We were actually able to look at our team of 38 people and we realized from our cash flow situation, from how the forecasts were financially, um, from how long we thought this was going to last, that we should keep a task force of maximum 11 people. And we were able to put the other 20 something people into a scheme which is called Casa Integrazione, which basically allows those people to their home, their rest in, uh, I'm sure they're cooking and they're eating and they're drinking as well. Um, but they're basically still part of our staff. Um, they are paid 80%, 8-0 of their total salary by the government from all of the contributions that we've been paid over the year, that we've been paying to the government over the years. And this scheme can last up to 26 weeks. And we can actually recall our people one by one as and when we decide and as and when we need them. And this really is a fantastic scheme that allows the continuity of the company. And in the meantime, our task force of 11, which is 11 incredible people who were chosen for their will, for their skill set, for their capacity to work under pressure, under stress, and also for their capacity to work 360 degrees. We've made a huge effort with our communications, always to be positive, always to be transparent, always to be honest, and try to keep as much information as possible, but make it very, very simple and be very realistic about what we are living. We realize that there are so many communication outlets today and everybody's telling you something different. So as we have the fortune to actually live here, just as David and his company do, they can be very, very honest with you and say, hey guys, this is exactly what is happening outside our window. So in order for us to preserve the business, not only for IC Bellagio but also, and our team, but also for all of our partners across Italy who've given us so much over the last 20 years and will continue to do so. We really, really pushed and encouraged our advisors to encourage their, their clients, their travelers to postpone their trips. I have to take my hat off to our team because we had 53 files that were due to travel during the month of March and our team was able to save 32 of those files and turn them into postponements. Many of the dates we've already rebooked either during the month of during the year of 2020 or 2021. We've tried to be extremely open, extremely uh, flexible with our travelers as well. And just like David, we've even given the option of postponement, which is something that would be our preference to enable for us to ensure the livelihoods, again, of all of those people across the country. As all we keep hearing is, how can we help? How can we help? Well, if you really truly want to help, postpone the trip don't cancel, save tourism and support the local people. Um, if in case people do want their monies refunded, of course, our everyday cancellation policy does of course kick in. So right now, we are still receiving one or two new requests. Uh, we received a wonderful new request today for September for an anniversary trip, which has made us very, very happy. Of course, we can't find rooms for these people on the Amalfi Coast, as you can imagine, um, but we are still working at it. And we are just continuing to um, you know, be in contact with our travel advisors 
be very, very open with them, keep them informed on what's going on. We are preparing ourselves also as a company for what happens at the end of this when people do start to travel, because we do believe that we're going to have an avalanche of requests, which is going to be music to our ears. And our idea is we are a partner for you in good times and bad. And uh, we are just really making the most of this time to stay positive, exchange our experience with so many of our colleagues across the world because right after China, Italy was the first country to be hit. And so we have a lot of experience to share. We have our things that we could have done better. We have things that really worked well for us. And so much of my day in particular is spent talking to my colleagues across the world, helping them get through this, um, either emotionally or also from a business point of view and really keeping people's spirits up because it's not about the individual person. I think it's about the industry and it's our responsibility to do all possible uh, to save the industry. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. I, I truly believe that as well. And that's why we've been trying to stay in contact with all of our partners and we extend our support to you as well. Thank so you. thank you for that. Um, next up, we have Kylie Swen, who is the regional sales manager, especially for our office at TravelX International. And I thought it was important that um, we have somebody from the insurance industry share what's going on there. So Kylie, can you tell us what's happening in the travel insurance industry? Absolutely. And thank you for asking me to be a part of this today, Lisa. Um, I have to say my accent isn't nearly as good uh, as, as what I have to follow here. It's nice to hear some um, people from other countries. Uh, obviously, I am from the Midwest, as you can probably hear in my accent, if you will. So I do have the opportunity to visit the office and have um, the opportunity to, to know many people within TravelX International. Um, so to share a little bit about how this has impacted travel X insurance services or the travel industry as a whole, um, obviously we're, we're pretty regulated. So we have to work within the details that we have prescribed in our description of coverage. But I think what we've been able to do is figure ways to keep the business moving forward, um, much like what Andrea and David talked about is how can we help support, keep, uh, keep those people uh, comfortable with saying we are going to move our trip to a, a date beyond um, this event and how can the insurance be made available so that the premium can be pushed forward. So that's what we're seeing a lot of right now is uh, with the postponements and the cancellations, um, most people are saying I am choosing to just put this on hold right now and then we can go ahead and apply their policy to their next trip. So. Um, I've spent majority of my days in the probably past four to six weeks uh, helping to reaccommodate the insurance policies. And there's a lot of coverage that can be made available for clients right now. Um, I have to say also the suppliers that are globally have done a fantastic job of working with everyone. Um, so should there be cancellations and postponements, um, the future credits that are, are out there and available are um, are being made, you know, something that is making that client whole again so that they're keeping their financial investments um, in their travels. So that's pushed forward. Um, so if, to be more specific, in some situations where we've seen people that have either contracted the virus, they've had to cancel, maybe they've had traveling companions or family members um, that have contracted the virus, uh, those are reasons for cancellation within the policy. So there's uh, cancellation, of course, prior to departure. Um, we unfortunately did also have some that were traveling and contracted the virus. So there's trip interruption. And so that's going to be the portion of the policy that reimburses them for their financial um, missing of the trip, if you will. But obviously, more importantly, is that medical expense benefit. And when somebody is traveling, it's, it's very critical, regardless of the situation, um, to have primary medical coverage. And all of the travel X insurance policies are just that, they're primary, which this allows us uh, to be the one and only insurance company that you need to contact should there be a medical event while you're traveling. And so rather you are uh, sick for this purpose with, with COVID or perhaps somebody just had an accident while they're traveling and uh, has an injury, 
having one insurance company to contact to make one claim means a lot um, in, a, in a situation when you're in a foreign country. So um, I highly encourage you to not ever travel without medical insurance. Um, and also in a company with that, we have the emergency medical evacuation. So sh should somebody need to be um, brought home, and uh, that can take on a variety of different methods. So if uh, somebody just has a, a minor injury, maybe we need to upgrade them to a more comfortable class of air, or in a significant event, perhaps they need to have an air ambulance home. So um, within the policy, there is also emergency medical evacuation, which again is, is very critical. So regardless of the current events or any time, medical insurance should be one of the number one reasons to consider taking insurance. Um, to talk a little bit more about the, the actual events, so um, I know we've had a lot of commonly asked questions. Um, one of them is it relates to quarantine. If somebody uh, were scheduled to travel and they are in quarantine, a doctor prescribed quarantine, there is reason for cancellation um, in the policy for that. Uh, a lot of concerns also for those that are employed and perhaps um, they are now having their vacations um, leave revoked, they've got something planned, and all of a sudden their employer says, I'm sorry, we just can't have you traveling at this point. Uh, we do have coverage for um, business reasons, if you will, uh, which that is uh, something that is not necessarily always thought of. Um, I think there's also a lot of concern out there when it relates to what if I were to lose my job? Um, our policy also offers cancellation for if somebody's been employed um, for one continual year and they were to lose their job. Um, but these are, are things that you know are in the policies, so it's all the more reason to go ahead and start making plans to, to get out there and enjoy some of the travel um, that is going to be available because we're all going to need to get out of the house and, and, and see something new and enjoy some of the beautiful things um, in the world. So uh, that those are things that you should be considering um, when you're looking at the insurance is to making sure it's meeting the needs that you have and the, and the worries that you might have. I do want to just put out there um, that cancellation for fear of something hasn't actually happened to you, um, that is not going to be covered. It, it, it is something that there needs to be um, a specific event that has occurred to you. So that's another uh, question that we get quite frequently. And a lot of this information that I'm sharing with you is actually posted on our website under um, an FAQ. So if you like to see more of this in writing, um, it is available for you to review um, as, as many of the questions that we've been receiving. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about um, the concern that we've been hearing. And um, I think that financial default of some of the things that could potentially happen in the industry has uh, been brought up quite a bit. Um, our policy does offer an opportunity when you purchase it within either 15 or 21 days. Um, we have two programs and, and it, talk to your advisor about that. They can expand on it a little bit more. But when a policy is purchased um, during those early days right after the deposit, we do also offer a benefit called financial default. And that speaks to if there was a supplier that was to go um, into insolvency, bankruptcy, and no longer is supplying um, that uh, that travel arrangement that you had paid them for. So uh, again, another reason that you should consider insurance and then of course making sure you're going um, on your next vacation. Um, so I will say that there are a number of different reasons that you should still want to make sure they're, uh, that you're buying the insurance. Um, there's probably specific reasons that you may want to know about. Talk to your advisors. Uh, they can give you some information. TravelX Insurance is happy to answer questions. I will tell you right now, though, we are having some um, higher call volumes. So submitting your question in writing is always an alternative uh, for you as well. Um, but do call one of us um, on our uh, lines. We have a number of licensed insurance professionals that would be happy to answer your questions and um, just you know, consider that next trip. How can we protect that investment and um, keep the world moving around? So um, look for our website and uh, more, more information in writing is available uh, for you to reference. Thanks, Kylie. We do have one question for Kylie, but I wanna mention if you do have a question for 
um, David, Andrea, or Kylie, um, please type it in the question and answer box or you can type it in the chat box. So the first question, Kylie, is for you. It says, um, TravelX insurance mentioned primary medical insurance when traveling. Does that mean that my regular medical coverage isn't valid? It doesn't mean that your insurance isn't valid. It just means we're the first insurance company in line. So for simplicity purposes, when you're in a foreign country, let's say, you may not be able to present your traditional insurance and necessarily have it accepted by that particular facility. If you need assistance from TravelX, you can reach us on our assistance line. We can actually assist with making payment directly to that facility. Let's say it's something a little bit more minor and you were to pay for it out of your pocket and then come home, rather than having to go through your own personal health insurance, maybe you have deductibles, maybe you have co-payments that you need to address first, you can actually send that to us. We are primary, so we're the first insurance company in line. All right, perfect. Um, I don't see any other questions. If you have questions, please type them in so that we can get them answered. Um, and if you have questions for Tim Rinkowski from Crystal, you can actually type those as well and I will get them over to him um, and then we can make sure that we answer those. Um, but I did want to also before we do, if, if nobody does have any questions, um, I do want to mention that um, there are a couple of slides that David sent over to us in regards to what's happening in China with the numbers and, and how they've plateaued. So we will get those over to you. We will also send you the company website so that you guys can take a look at those. But you can also contact um, any of us at TravelX International and we can um, get the questions over to the individuals to get them answered for you as well. So I don't see any other questions. So I'm, I, I'm gonna be very appreciative of David and Andrea's time because I know they're extremely busy um, in what they're doing over in Europe. So, and, and hopefully we will be in touch soon because I think once this is all over, I think people are, who have the travel bug are gonna be back in contact with us and we'll be busier than what we know what to do with. So, but thank you so much for joining us and, and taking the time to share with us what's going on in um, Italy and France. And then Kylie also for filling us in for the insurance. So thank you so much for joining us and um, everybody have a wonderful day.